Hey Liverpool fans, have you seen the latest release? At Anfield Index, we've teamed up with Liverpool FC to announce that the brand new 24-25 LFC Nike home kit and anthem jacket are out now, and they're hotter than ever. The brand new kit pays homage to the legendary Rome 1984 side, featuring sleek pinstripe detailing that brings a touch of history to our modern game. Whether you're cheering from the cop or watching from home, you'll feel the spirit of the Reds coursing through every stitch. The best part? You can grab yours today. The new kit and training range are available in official stores, online, and through the LFC store app. Don't wait. Order now and be ready to show your Liverpool pride and style. Get your hands on the new 24-25 LFC home kit and anthem jacket today. Let's make this season unforgettable. You'll never walk alone. I'm Trent Alexander-Arnold. I'm Curtis Jones. I am Cody Gagbo. Putting on the Liverpool top for the first time, it was a dream come true and I'll never forget that moment. The new LFC 24-25 season Nike home kit is out now. Buy it today, along with our new goalkeeper kit and training range at your official LFC stores. Online at liverpoolfc.com forward slash store and on the official LFC store app. You will never walk alone. Another day is here and you're ready for it. What to wear? Check. Breakfast, lunch and dinner? Check. Planning for what's next and how to save for it? That's where Bank of America can help. For your financial to-dos, Bank of America has experts ready to help get you closer to your goals. Get started at one of our local financial centers or 24-7 in our mobile banking app. Find a location near you at bankofamerica.com slash talk to us. What would you like the power to do? Mobile banking requires downloading the app and is only available for select devices. Message and data rates may apply. Bank of America and a member FDIC. Thanks for choosing this free Anfield Index podcast. If you'd prefer to listen to this or any of our other shows without adverts, then now's the time to check out Anfield Index Pro. With AI Pro, you can supercharge your entire listening experience. You'll not only get all of our podcasts without the ads, but you'll have them far faster with our quick publish feature available exclusively for subscribers. AI Pro also puts you in the heart of our sound studio, with an option to listen to many of our shows live and interact with the podcasters in real time as the shows are recording. Upgrading couldn't be easier. AI Pro is available on all popular podcast platforms, and we have our own apps for Apple and Android. Just head on over to AnfieldIndexPro.com and get started today. Hello and welcome to The Daily Red, your lunchtime catch-up on all things Liverpool FC on a Thursday after Atalanta, conquerors of Liverpool, absolutely wiped the floor with Bayer Leverkusen in the Europa League final. And all of a sudden, our exit to them doesn't look quite as bad. Um, I think from a Liverpool point of view, though, the most notable thing that came out of last night is that there are two players at Atalanta that would look really well in Liverpool red. One of them is Scalvini, who came on at half time. We've often talked about how you know, with Ibu's injuries and Joe Matip leaving and the potential of Joe Gomez leaving, it would be nice to have a consistent presence next to Verge. Someone that you can just pencil in for 35 starts a season across all competitions. And Scalvini would represent that. At his age, with the skill set he already has and the potential he has, I think he would be an exceptional signing for us. I don't think he'd be incredibly expensive. I think you'd probably get him for around the 50 million mark. He's a tremendous prospect in that role. And he's already fundamentally excellent, reads the game well. He's got consistency to his game. He's got versatility to his game because he can do a shift for you at right back if needed. He can play either center back slot. In a back three, he's played all three. Uh, I see people talking about him as a defensive midfielder. He's played there once this season uh, at the weekend against Lecce, who aren't particularly good, and he struggled. So let's forget that nonsense idea. Play him as a centre-back, develop him next to Virgil, and you're going to end up at one of the best centre-backs in the world if he stays fit. That's his upside. That's his potential. Um, But the one who really stood out last night as being everything we need in midfield is Ederson. He came to Anfield and absolutely monstered our midfield. And I thought last night, 
if it weren't for the fact that Luckman got a hat trick, Ederson was the very clear man of the match for me. I thought he was absolutely magnificent. He turned 25 this summer. So you've got plenty of runway ahead of him for development. He's not a player with a huge amount of miles on his legs. He's had a bit of a journeyman career to get to Atalanta. Started off with uh, Desportivo Brazil, was with them until 2019, had a loan during his time there with Cruzeiro, went to Cruzeiro, spent a season there, got sold to Corinthians. I think there was some sort of some sort of falling out with Cruzeiro after he'd been bought by them where their finances collapsed and he wasn't paid his wages. And I, I don't know if they let him go for free or they sold him on the cheap, but he went to Corinthians anyway. And he basically played for them for a year. Then he got loaned to Fortaleza, spent a year there. Then he moved to San Onatana, spent six months there, impressed everybody joined Atalanta two years ago, and in the last two years, he has just come on in in leaps and bounds. He has just been phenomenal this season. His energy, his work rate, his ability to always be in the right place. He's good on the ball. He's not elite on the ball, but he's good on the ball. But he's elite off it. Absolutely elite off it he would be the perfect defensive midfielder to bring in next to Alexis McAllister in that double pivot that Arnie Slot likes to play. Like, we've just spent a year watching Waturo Endo, right? And there's there's things to like about Endo's game. You know, you like how much he gets stuck in. You like how forceful he is. But he lacks mobility. He lacks burst. But he's decent on the ball. Well, Ederson, skill set wise, is kind of endo with everything turned up to 11. He's better on the ball. He's far more mobile. He's more dynamic, more explosive. But he's got that forcefulness, that physicality. He's got that just unending will to win and to drag the team across the line. Like, we were watching yesterday, and the guy's making runs beyond the centre, like, beyond his own forward line, getting behind the centre-backs in, like, the last 15 minutes of the game. When he's put in an incredible shift to that point. Like, his first half performance, I know Luckman got the goals, but it was him and Coop Miners that suffocated Atalanta, and it's him that allows Coop Miners to get away with some of the mistakes he makes, because Coop Miners will often press the wrong time or be a half second too low on the press, but Ederson will come steaming in behind and clean everything up. For me, we'll be doing the transfer committee pod next week, and you best believe there's going to be a forceful pitch of him among the defensive midfield candidates. He's never, ever going to be the best player in the world. He won't be our best player, but he could become one of our most important players, one of our most valuable players, because of the fact that he allows others to make mistakes and he just cleans everything up. Like like Fabinho did. Like that was the most valuable thing about Fabinho is that other players could press with reckless abandon, knowing that if we don't get there, if we're a half second too late, Fabinho is going to come in behind and clean it up. And you saw with Atalanta last night. I mean, to play that style against a team like Leverkusen, who are so good at moving the ball from their defensive third into that middle third and then building out from there. And he just didn't let them have a sniff of the ball in midfield. Every time it was played into midfield, he was just right into a tackle. 
didn't matter whether it was Palacios receiving it or, or Xhaka rece- receiving it. As soon as they got the ball, he was in on top of them. And he just swarms them. And he's got this fantastic ability to almost engulf them without fouling them. Plays right on the edge of, you know, what will constitute a foul, but knows where that line is and doesn't cross it very often. He's just an outstanding ball winner, an absolutely outstanding ball winner. And he's good on the ball. And when you've got that combination, that's exactly what we're going to need in that position. So for me, I really hope... Now, look, the the scouts, the, the analysts, the recruitment team as a whole will be more than familiar with this guy. Most likely will already have him on their list, but I, I would hope that they watched that game last night and put the eye test to the numbers. And Richard Hughes, as we know, is a huge fan of Serie A, so he'll be more than familiar with this player. I think I think he would represent a brilliant piece of business for us this summer. You put him and Alexis in that double pivot and then build from there. Like All of a sudden, you start to look. You put him in our team this past season, and I think we'd go a hell of a lot closer to the league title. A hell of a lot closer. He's just relentless. And, like, you look at the amount of games he's played this season as well. Like, he's over 4,000 minutes. Now, I might be wrong about this, but I think Virgil's the only player that played over 4,000 minutes for us this season. And his role demands a lot more running and sprinting and physicality than Virgil's often will. And yet there he is in appearance number 52, putting in that level of performance with that level of energy. Now, it helped that he got the game at the weekend off. Scalvini started in midfield instead of him. But, like, for game 52 to have that level of intensity and aggression and just work rate, phenomenal. The great thing about him as well is like he's not just a win the ball, give it to others who can play. He'll win the ball and drive with it. He'll win the ball and play that incisive pass. And he'll follow on. He got seven goals this season. Six in the league, one in the Europa. Like if you can get four to five goals a season from your defensive midfielder, it's just such a huge bonus because that's not what they're in the team to do. But if they can give you that on top, like look at Rodri. How often have we seen Rodri come up with big, big goals for Manchester City? Last season in the title running, in in the Champions League final. When you can get a defensive midfielder who also brings some goals, that's found money. It's incredible. So for me, I, I really, really hope that phone calls start being made very soon to see if there's a... I think there would be a strong possibility of getting him. I really do. Um, Moving on. This is Anfield. Jürgen left a mark on all our lives. Nine years of milestones. Come back to that. Um, Meet the man who makes the incredible mosaics for Liverpool FC. Okay, we'll come back to that. Uh, Craig Bellamy linked to Bayern Munich and Burnley jobs. So obviously Vincent Company, Vincent Company, fresh off relegation, is um, heading to Bayern Munich to be their new manager by the looks of things, which is an absolutely remarkable turn of events. Craig Bellamy is one of his assistants, so he could well go to Bayern as his assistant, or there is some talk that um, he could be the one that replaces company at Burnley. Let's see. Liverpool could lose defender for bargain fee. So it turns out that Seb Vandenberg's buyout or buy clause for mines is less than 5 million euro. I mean, that's that's a scandal. 
That's a scandal. How have we allowed that to happen? The the Schmatke Klopp combo of uh, overseeing the squad last summer did did not do a particularly good job in a lot of ways. Uh, right, let's see what marks did Jurgen Klopp leave? Uh, did, did, did we well, obviously we know a lot of them. So this piece is by David Lynch, uh, an era of milestones. Hugs and beers shared with Klopp. So that is a piece off from uh, that is a reference to uh, after winning the Europa uh, the European Cup in Madrid. Um, it's a personal story. He's also told the story of sitting in Klopp's first press conference. I'm Trent Alexander-Arnold. I'm Curtis Jones. I am Cody Gagbo. Putting on the Liverpool top for the first time, it was a dream come true and I'll never forget that moment. The new LFC 24-25 season Nike home kit is out now. Buy it today along with our new goalkeeper kit and training range at your official LFC stores. Online at liverpoolfc.com forward slash store and on the official LFC store app. You will never walk alone. When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Kroger, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth-watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make shopping Kroger worth it every time. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply. Jewelry isn't a gift you give just once. It's a way to remind your loved one of a beautiful moment every time they see it. Blue Nile can help you find the gift that says how you feel and says it beautifully with expert guidance and a wide assortment of jewelry of the highest quality at the best price. Go to BlueNile.com and experience the convenience of shopping Blue Nile, the original online jeweler since 1999. That's BlueNile.com to find the perfect jewelry gift for any occasion. BlueNile.com I recall sitting in Klopp's first press conference in the Reds' lounge of what was then called the Centenary Stand, thinking that simply returning Liverpool to the Champions League on a rep- on a regular basis would, would represent a success. You know, to be fair, he, he's not far off. Like that's, I think that was a lot of people's mindsets was that if if Jurgen could get us back, you know, in the top four on a regular basis, that would be an improvement on what had gone on. Uh, Anfield is known for its amazing colour and noise, which becomes all the more prominent and meaningful when it is accompanied by a mosaic, which has been the labour of love for one fan for almost 30 years. So Andy Knott is the, he's he's a contributor to the rattle, uh, read all over the land, and he's the one that designs the mosaics and has done for nearly 30 years. That's incredible. It's always very cool to see. Um, it's always very cool to see, you know, fans that do contribute in these amazing ways get the recognition. So this is really good from This Is Anfield. I think it was written by Joanna Durkin, who always does really good stuff. So check that piece out. It's really good. Uh, Jurgen Klopp will make a return to Anfield next month. To watch Taylor Swift. Um, so he's going to go to one of the three concerts. Uh, his wife bought tickets to one of the shows. Oh, and, and he um, <laughs> he re- revealed that during the Q&A that went on this week. Uh, also to close, and he started singing Shake It Off to her. Fair play. So she's playing at Anfield on the 13th, 14th and 15th of June as part of her Eras tour, which is, I think, I think breaking the, breaking kind of any and all record for uh, attendance and money generated and stuff. And by all accounts, it is an incredible show, whether you're a fan of the music or not, by all accounts, it is a great spectacle to witness. Um Right. Those gigs apparently are worth millions to the club as well. Manchester City relegation odds slashed ahead of verdict 
over 115 charges. Uh, let's see. City are currently 25 to 1 to be relegated, but that'll be for next season. They wouldn't actually be relegated next season, I don't think, because they will appeal any decision. Um, they could get an enormous points deduction for the following season, which would mean that the relegation would get pushed back. Uh, City are currently 25 to 1, with six clubs considered more likely to retain their spots. Liverpool, Arsenal, United, Tottenham, Newcastle and Villa. (laughs) Not Chelsea, though. (laughs) But they're facing charges as well. So uh, City are facing 54 charges of failing to provide accurate financial information. 14 charges of failing to provide accurate details for player and management payments. Five charges of failing to comply with UEFA's rules, including FFP, and seven charges of breaching the Premier League's profit and sustainability rules. The remaining 35 charges are for failing to cooperate with the Premier League investigation. Now, do remember, this investigation took five years, and they came with 115 charges. There is no way City are skating on on these charges. There's no way. They might skate on a few of them, but there's no way they've been found not guilty on 115 charges. Absolutely no way. And the best part of all of this is that only covers from the 09-10 season to the 17-18 season because they began it in 2018. They could only do it retrospectively. That doesn't mean that the cheating stopped then. So there will need to be a second investigation into the cheating from 1819 to now, because you know it's still going on. They will get punished. The level of the punishment is is what's up for debate. Um, Right. Anfield Watch. Let's see. It's a piece definitely on Ergen Kaku. Uh, it's just nonsense, though. We're not going to be signing Ergen Kaku. Um, Euro 2024 call up slammed by England International. So, this is a piece about Curtis Jones. And. Who is it that's had a problem with this? Oh, it's Gabby Egbon Lahore. Yeah, let's let's just not even bother. Um, it's a piece about a fellow that used to play for us and didn't make the England squad there. I won't bother getting too deep into that. Gary Neville names top five Premier League managers ever. And Jurgen Klopp is in. I mean, the top five ever are surely obvious. It's Ferguson, Pep, Mourinho, Wenger and Klopp. Just depends on what order you put Wenger and Klopp, really. Wenger, Klopp and Mourinho. If you're basing it solely on Premier League, Mourinho is third. Wenger did win three, but Wenger was at Arsenal for 22 years. If Jürgen stayed another 13 years, I think he would have won two more. Uh, Jürgen won a European Cup, which Wenger never did. Wenger had a bigger impact on English football, like a far bigger impact. Wenger completely modernised English football from training methods to scouting to nutrition and on and on and on. But as purely a manager, I, I saw Carragher said he thinks it's Klopp. And, of course, the Arsenal fans had their tantrums. But I I kind of feel like he might be right. If we just talk about managing their own club, I think it might be Klopp over over Wenger. Mourinho is over Klopp. Pep is two and Ferguson is one. I know that won't sit well with people to suggest that Jose is over Klopp, but he just is. Um, Yeah, so 
Neville has Ferguson, Pep, Mourinho three, Wenger four, and Klopp. And Carragher had Mourinho three, Klopp four, and Wenger five. I'm, I'm kind of inclined to go with Carragher. Now, I don't think the Champions League even necessarily needs to come into it. If we just look at the league, like, yes, he, he won three, but he won three in his first eight years and then didn't win any for 14 years. Like, he won his last one in 04 and he left in 18. That's an awfully long time to win, to not win the, the, the Premier League. And, you know, people say, oh, well, he was, you know, going up against this club and that club. Klopp was going up against City. Wenger didn't have to worry about him for the 2000s when he didn't win for the last six years. As soon as Chelsea came in, that was the end of Wenger. But it's not like Klopp didn't also have to deal with Chelsea. Chelsea continued to spend and actually have spent more under Bowley than they did under Roman because Bowley's an idiot. But they spent... So Chelsea, United, same as Wenger. Now, again, not Ferguson's United, but United throwing... Huge amounts of money. Wenger dealt with an inconsistent Liverpool. Klopp has dealt with an inconsistent Arsenal. But this Arsenal team is better than any Liverpool team that Wenger would have gone up against. I think Spurs have been more consistently good while Klopp's been at Liverpool than they were while Wenger was at Arsenal. This is the best Villa that either have seen. This is the best Newcastle. Newcastle finished second one year when Wenger was there. They did, didn't they? But it was one year. But this is Newcastle now with, with new money. Like, the, the league the league spends a lot more money now. A lot more clubs have access to that money. So, while... You know, Wenger had to deal with United and then with Chelsea and United. Klopp's had to deal with Chelsea, United, City, Arsenal, Spurs. And I know the excuse for Wenger always is, oh, the stadium, the stadium, the stadium. The stadium wasn't crippling them for 12 years. It just wasn't. Maybe for three or four. But what about the other eight? Just silly. Um, on to anfieldindex.com, see what's new. Got a bunch of new podcasts out. Uh, but in terms of articles, there is a piece about the past season, a piece about Ragnar Clavin talking about Phil Coutinho, a piece about where Klopp would rank in the Premier League manager hierarchy, a piece about uh, Liverpool having interest in Justin Bijlow. Now, commented on this yesterday and um, I still stand by it. I don't think he's moving to a club where he's not going to be the number one because at 26 years of age, he needs to be playing and he's going to want to retain a spot in the national team and, you know, establish himself as first choice for the national team. But the bigger reason why this move is very, very unlikely to happen uh, if you go to transfer market, go to st- and put like put his name in. Go to stats. Go to injury history. Again, he's twenty six years of age, so he's not an old timer. He's not a player that's had the full career. He's been a starter for basically three years. Well, no, that's not fair. He's been a starter actually for 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 probably five to six years, but. He's never played more than 25 league games in a year. Uh, 16, 7, 14, 22, 22, and 15 this past year. His injury history at age 26 has a page 2. 18, 19, knee injury, 14 games. 18, 19, foot injury, 51 games. 19, 20, elbow injury. 18 games. Uh, 1920, minor knock, two games. 2021, tie problems, three games. 2021, knee injury, three games. 
2021 toe injury, 22 games. 2021 knee injury, four games. 2021 knee injury, one game. 2021 knee injury, one game. 21-22 ill, one game. 21-22 groin injury, one game. He got COVID that year as well and missed five, so, but that's COVID. 21-22 foot surgery, 16 games. 22-23 wrist fracture, 16 games. 23-24 wrist fracture, 11 games. 23-24 calf injury, 14 games. Like, are, are is this a real suggestion that we'd sign this lad? Who, who misses 20 games a year? No chance. Absolutely no chance. We would be absolutely bananas to even consider it. Talented and knows he is. Arnie Slot says he's very privileged to replace Jurgen Klopp at Liverpool. He speaks well. He does speak well. Um, Podcast-wise, there is part one of the transfer committee, which we did uh, keep sell loan through the whole squad. There is the season review part two with Guy, Jim and Trev. And there is a new scouted, which we were looking at all of the finals. So Europa League final last night, FA Cup final on Saturday, Championship playoff final on Sunday, Europa Conference League final next Wednesday, and then Champions League final next Wednesday. We went through all of them. We kind of just skipped over the Europa League and just did it quickly because the game was on last night and we didn't think it would get to enough people. So there was no point in digging into it too much. But we we had a good chat about the rest. Um, Yeah, there's more to come. There is part three of the season review. I think it's coming today, uh, which is myself, Carl, joining Guy. And then there's a whole bunch more. There's a scout. So Tommy's to come. There'll be Moby on the spot. And that's it. That's all I have for today, folks. I will see you all tomorrow. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye. We hope you enjoyed listening to this Anfield Index show. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel so future podcasts find their way to your device automatically. There's nothing quite like fan engagement, and we'd love to know what you think of anything discussed on this show. The best way to get in touch is over on our free Discord community, where both podcasters and listeners debate the hottest LFC topics 24-7. Sign up free now at anfieldindex.com forward slash discord. You won't regret it. You can also follow us on Twitter at Anfield Index and find us on Facebook by searching for Anfield Index. Oh, and before you go, we'd love it if you could leave us a five-star review on your favourite podcast app. It only takes a couple of seconds, and it means the world to the people who create these free shows. Sports Social Podcast Network. I'm Trent Alexander-Arnold. I'm Curtis Jones. I am Cody Gagbo. Putting on the Liverpool top for the first time, it was a dream come true, and I'll never forget that moment. The new LFC 24-25 season Nike Home Kit is out now. Buy it today, along with our new goalkeeper kit and training range, at your official LFC stores, online at liverpoolfc.com forward slash store, and on the official LFC store app. You will never walk alone.